Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. This is ABC Big 2 News at 10. The countdown is on tonight to the big game tomorrow. Football fans are pouring into Los Angeles for when the Rams take on the Cincinnati Bengals tomorrow. Taking a live look now from our Los Angeles camera tonight. It's a beautiful night with a lot of preparation underway and businesses are busy too. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rob Tuke. And I'm Stephanie Martinez. ABC's Kaylin Harden has, is on the ground tonight at the SoFi Stadium where the excitement is building for that showdown. Just one more sleep before kickoff for Super Bowl 56. The excitement ramping up for a matchup almost no one predicted. I'm betting on the Rams about $500. So I got the Rams. SoFi Stadium in all its splendor, ready to pack more than 70,000 fans into the multi-billion dollar home of the Rams. This stadium itself was built for the Super Bowl. Los Angeles bracing for what could be the hottest Super Bowl in NFL history, with two quarterbacks geared up to beat the Heat. I kind of got, kind of got tired of the whole underdog thing. We're in the Super Bowl. You know, we're a really good team that deserves to be here. The Bengals trying to bring the first Super Bowl championship back to Cincinnati, led by young quarterback Joe Burrow with all his confidence and swagger on. Still didn't get him. Oh my goodness, how did he get away with that chance? And off the field. Just two years into the NFL, and he's engineered the quickest turnaround for a franchise in league history. But it's the Rams and their team of superstars who are the favorite. Every scar, every tear, every smile, every bit of pain is all for this. Quarterback Matthew Stafford's experience giving them an edge and a chance at his first ring in his 13th season in the league and first with the Rams. You know, we're just excited about the opportunity, just like everybody would think. Um, you know, we've had a great week of preparation and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to get out there and play. The anticipation just is supercharged. For halftime, starring five legends of hip-hop and R&B, promising to be an epic, nostalgic experience. We want to make sure everybody knows that this is one of the best halftime shows ever. A lucky group of kids are going to see the Rams and the Bengals go head-to-head. -head. We're taking a look on how they're preparing on spending tomorrow in just moments. But first, a check on our forecast with Bridget Sarpong. Now, your Big Two forecast first. Happy Saturday, friends. The weekend has arrived, and unlike yesterday, we actually have cooled down today. Today, West Texans were able to enjoy 63 degree temperatures. Actually, we did sit in normal around this time for February at 63. Warm today, but not as warm as yesterday, or how we're back in 1962 when we were sitting at a nice and steamy 86 degrees. I'll have more of today's forecast and the weekend's forecast later on the show. Back over to you guys. Thank you, Bridget. Developing now at 10, there is a growing urgency tonight over a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. Potent, uh, President Biden spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin today, warning of a severe cost of an invasion. The call came from the White House after it issued a warning that the, the, treat the threat of invasion may in be imminent and the risk of a war looming more U.S. troops arrive in the Eastern Europe overnight. Now Americans are urged to leave Ukraine immediately. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz has the latest on that potential military action and that high stakes phone call. President Biden spent just over an hour on the phone with Russian President Vladimir Putin. A senior administration official telling ABC News there was no fundamental change in the dynamic that has been unfolding now for several weeks. Fears are mounting that Russia could invade Ukraine sooner than expected, even before the Olympics are set to conclude February 20th. We can't pinpoint the day at this point, uh, and we can't pinpoint the hour, but what we can say is that there is a credible prospect that a Russian military action would take place even before the end of the Olympics. A consensus among most analysts estimates that there are between 60 to 100,000 Russian troops close to Ukraine. Massive Russian military exercises in Belarus have U.S. officials concerned, but Moscow has continued to deny it intends to launch an offensive against Ukraine. The White House uh, and intelligence services are seeing that all of the pieces of the puzzle, everything that Russia would need 
need to invade Ukraine is coming together. The State Department ordering embassy staffers to leave. Canada, the UK, Japan and many other countries also telling their citizens to leave Ukraine immediately. President Biden's national security advisor has said Americans who do not leave should not expect the U.S. military to rescue them in the event of a Russian invasion. If a Russian attack on Ukraine proceeds, it is likely to begin with aerial bombing and missile attacks that could obviously kill civilians without regard to their nationality. The Biden administration says it will continue to work on two paths, diplomacy as well as deterrence, which includes the deployment of 3,000 additional U.S. troops to Poland to reassure allies. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And to stay up to date with these overseas developments and where those U.S. troops will land, just head to our website, yourbasin.com. Across Texas tonight, a number of community groups held a rally downtown El Paso today. Protesters in El Paso are, coming, are calling the state's leading environmental agency to support the reassessment of pollution levels in El Paso. Some of those protesters are in the group of Familias Unidas de Camisal. Back in 2018, they filed a lawsuit against the EPA to reassess pollution levels in the region. It's about, it's like a wake-up call to, to El Paso. This lawsuit and any efforts we do is a wake-up call que este es un problema que se tiene que tratar y que la ciudad de El Paso tiene mucha responsabilidad. Recently, the EPA stated in court that it would look at those levels in El Paso, but organizers say that they want the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality to do the same thing. Now to a protest on our northern border. Tonight, trucks cleared out of a pandemic restrictions and vaccine mandate protest that has disrupted trade for at least six days between the United States and Canada. But protesters are still on foot, continuing to demonstrate they are defying a judge's order to clear the busiest border crossing between the United States and Canada. Their numbers grew to several hundred today despite a large police presence pushing them back. The blockade is disrupting the flow of crucial auto parts from Ontario to Detroit. It has triggered the auto industry to scale back production in both countries. Your right to make a political statement does not outweigh the rights of a million people in Ottawa to live peacefully, free of harassment and chaos in their own homes. There will be consequences for these actions. And they will. Now the protest comes as the so-called Freedom Convoy stretches to parts of Canada. Now those protesters are floating into New York, where a small group gathered against vaccine mandates. Protesters stood on the roadside waving flags and signs. Some cars and trucks formed a small convoy as part of the protest. Now the protest has inspired demonstrations in other countries like France, New Zealand and Australia. As many Americans are now taking off their masks, others are doubling down and in fact feel the need to filtrate to, for filtration of others to go unmasked. KN95 masks have been the most available high filtration masks for sale, but now there are fake masks flooding the market. ABC's Becky Worley has that new warning for us tonight. According to the CDC, these critical pieces of protection may not be offering the filtration they promise. The agency's site listing masks that it says are not approved and might not offer adequate protection. KN95s are supposed to filter out 95% of very small particles. But Aaron Collins, a mechanical engineer with a background in aerosol science, says he's tested many supposed KN95s that only filter 30% of particles. So counterfeit respirators are a big issue, and that's ex it's, it's almost exclusively in the KN95 space. And so we're seeing a lot of fakes in that space or underperforming masks. Add to that a 2020 report that stated 60 to 70 percent of KN95 masks did not meet U.S. regulatory standards. And this has consumers asking, I think all these masks are legitimate, but how do I really know? There are a lot of things people could look for in a counterfeit mask that are red flags. The starting point? You have to make sure that the manufacturer is reputable. She says buy directly from their website. Also look at the packaging for any misspellings or weird phrasing. Experts also say look for quality control issues. Is the nose piece centered and sewn in properly? Are the ear loops strongly affixed? Which look pretty good on this one. But self-described mask nerd Aaron Collins says it's tough. 
are you at 98% or 30%? This becomes a real problem because you don't know what the quality of the mask is and you can't just tell by looking at it. Aaron says he prefers KF94s, which he says are highly regulated by the Korean government, many of which strangely come from beauty importers like Be Healthy USA, also Collecte USA. He also says don't buy from online superstores. Instead, order from sites like Project N95 that he says verifies their mask. Well, guys, a chilly start to the day because of a cold front. Now, will tomorrow's temperatures warm up just in time to grow for the big game? I'll have that answer after the break. And one man has landed himself in hot water after he landed his car on someone else's roof. That crazy video is next. Today was another big day of college hoops in West Texas. We got the highlights for those games coming up. In the field, on the farm, at kitchen tables, and in church, Texans live by our conservative values. And that's why Kevin Sparks is running for Texas Senate. Hardworking, God-fearing, conservative, spent years working in the oil field, now leads his family business. Kevin Sparks, a Christian, father, believes in parents' rights. No CRT. And Kevin Sparks will work to secure our southern border. Endorsed by President Trump fighting for Texans. Cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze. Achoo. Needs. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Relief. Dissolves quickly, instantly ready to start working. So you can bounce back fast with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Now available for fast sinus relief. And now, most admired alum. Get up there. This is so embarrassing. There's no way it's me. <laughs> you know her. You love her. ruh -ro. What are you doing here? It's Anna Gomez! Who? Our first gazillionaire with AT&T fiber and has got the fastest internet with hyper gig speed. I didn't know you went to school. I have a lot in common. Live like a gazillionaire with AT&T fiber. Now with speeds up to five gigs. Limited availability. Hi, I'm Susie with Susie South 40. It's Valentine's, one of our favorite times of the year. And we're ready for you. We have giant hearts or we have hearts for someone that wants something smaller. <laughs> Love is in the air at Susie's South 40, and so is great tasting candies for every sweets lover in your life. Susie's South 40 is fully stocked with our handmade chocolates and unique gift items. Stop by and get your loved ones something special. Susie's South 40 Confections in Midland. Cupid Connection. ABC Big 2 wants to help make your Valentine's Day extra special. Visit yourbasin.com and submit a photo of you and your Valentine. Couple with the most votes will receive a $250 Cone Jewelers gift card, along with other great prizes. Prepare to feel good in 2022. Join Planet Fitness by February 16th and enjoy tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs for zero enrollment. Zero enrollment? And 10 bucks a month. That's $10 a month? Cancel any time. That makes me so happy. You know what else will make you happy? Blowing off steam in our judgment-free zone. <laughs> it's all about the endorphins, baby. What's up? It's this place, I tell you. Good man, baby. Join now and feel fantacular for zero enrollment, $10 a month. Cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, February 16th. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. Weather Authority. We warn you first. Well, hello, West Texans. Today's temperature is not bad for the basin. Actually, speaking of the basin, let's take a look at everyone's highs. We did have a cold front coming in the basin earlier this morning, which has caused us to be in our mid-40s. For some areas, such as the Middle Odessa area, sitting at 48 degrees, Seminole, 46 degrees. But we did have some areas that have warmed up, such as Big Spring, sitting at 64 degrees. Actually, warmer than our friends in Presidio, where it's always usually nice and warm, they managed to get to 58 degrees. However, there were some areas is also in their 40s, not just the Midland Odessa area, but the Guadalupe Pass sitting at 45 degrees, Carlsbad 47, and then we have Hobbs sitting at 46. So definitely not bad whatsoever. Now as we continue on with our evening, we will be cooling on down into our 20s, sitting at 25 degrees. Mostly clear skies for tonight, but there will be a couple lingering clouds in the area. But if you are going to be out
outdoors, be sure to have a little blanket because of that wind chill that we have blowing in our faces right now. It makes it seem like we're sitting at 32 degrees in the Midland and Odessa area, 27 degrees in Big Spring, 25 in Seminole. And our friends at Prince City was always nice and warm because of that wind chill in the area. It actually feels like 42 degrees. However, there are some areas sitting in their 20s as well, not just Midland, Odessa, but we have Marfa sitting at 26 degrees and even cooler right next door is Alpine sitting at 19 degrees. They have reached their teens because of that wind chill and that cold front that has reached the basin. Earlier today, West Texans were able to enjoy a high of 63 degrees, which feels normal for this time in February. Tying today, warm, not too warm, cold, not too cold, but not as cold as how it was or warm in 1962 when we were sitting at 86 degrees. Take a look at our lows. We did come in short for that today. 23 degrees for our lows. Usually around this time in February, we're definitely used to 36 degree temperatures. Today, we were cold in our 20s, but not as cold as how we were back in 1963 when we were sitting in our teens at 14 degrees. Definitely not too bad for the basin. The weekend has arrived, so temperatures are starting to look on nice. Now, we We'll have that cold front continue to stay in the basin into tonight. We're going to continue that cold front into our Sunday 6 a.m. being in our 30s for the entire Permian Basin area. That cold front is actually going to leave us just a little bit by 8 p.m., causing us to reach 57 degrees in Midland Odessa area and really 60 degrees by the time we get into Sunday 8 p.m. for both Carlsbad and for uh, Presidio was always nice and warm, so definitely not too bad whatsoever. We're going to continue on, and then that cold front is actually going to lead us by the time we get into Valentine's Day, causing us to be in our 60s. So definitely, again, we're going to have some really great temperatures, and for that grilling tomorrow for that big game, and also for Valentine's Day, whichever you take your pick, we're going to wake up at 25 degrees, and then we get into noon 54, increasing to 63 degrees. Now, the seven-day forecast is actually going to show that we will make it back into our 70s by the time we get into Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, but tomorrow's going to be perfect temperatures for, you know, being outdoors, grilling, and also grabbing your loved ones some gifts, some teddy bears, flowers, and all the goodies for Valentine's Day. So coming in strong with that 63 degree temperatures, Stephania and Rob. Yeah, of course, and I, I, I'm really excited for those weathers, for those people that are grilling outside. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> yeah, no excuse not to get outside, but when will it be acceptable to start walking around with a blanket? I was very comfortable today doing so. You and me both. <laughs> if you guys accept me, all right. All right thank well, you, Bridget. Thank you. A bizarre high-speed chase landed one man in handcuffs, but the problem didn't stop there. In fact, he's on the hook for something again. It's for landing his car on someone's roof weeks after that police chase. ABC's Cater Core has that new disturbing video. An illegal U-turn on the streets, ultimately ending in violence inside an Edmond jail cell. This is video from early December of officers struggling to get Joshua Wariboko Alali to cooperate after he was arrested for allegedly taking police on a two-mile chase. Okay, we're back rolling again. They're passing stop traffic. Police dash cam footage shows officers resorting to stop okay, sticks to slow Wari Boko Alali down near Coffee Creek and Coltrane. Okay. okay. I mean, that's a good hit on the stop sticks. Hands in the air! Hands all the way up in the air! But once taken to jail, security footage appears to show Wari Boko Alali refusing to get into his cell and moments later slamming a detention officer's head into the cell toilet. The 25-year-old was released from custody. Sit down, sit down. But just two months later, Wari Boko Alali's BMW, the same one from the chase, was dangling from the roof of a home near Hefner and MacArthur. Police believe he was speeding and lost control, somehow becoming airborne in the process. Court records show Wari Boko Alali was never charged in the Edmund incident. An officer said Thursday he may only face traffic violations in the most recent case. Now over to sports with Avi Karagloff. Avi, it was a busy day for college basketball in the basin. What can you tell us about it? Well, first, we had another basketball doubleheader at the Falcon Dome. Both the women's and men's teams were in action today against the Texas A&M Kingsville 
Havelinas. Yes, I said that right. Havelinas. Both teams were coming off wins. The men, they won their last three in a row. The women, their last two. Let's start with the women. And this one got interesting real quick. Ogechi Nwodo catching the interior pass from Rory Carter. Angles around the defender and scores. She had a double-double with 11 points and 10 rebounds. Carter picks up another one of her game. High five assists. That's Kim Best from straightaway center. Carter with a nice play there. And then Carter gets the ball in the wing. Another nice entry pass to Alexis Wyckoff. Spinning and winning into an easy two off the glass. She had 17 points to tie for the team lead. And then how about this move from Holly Hemeline? Turns off her pivot foot, drives baseline, in and out, dribble, reverse layup. Falcons with a big two there. A nice play to get them in. And then this wild sequence here. Falcons, they're down two late. Nagechi Uwodo on the ground. Ball squirts out to Carter. Carter trying to push. A little bit of give and go here. Carter at the buzzer for the win. Oh, and the shot. It appeared to be blocked. Falcons, they get outscored by 10 in the fourth quarter as they fall at home just barely in this conference matchup. And then on the men's side, the Falcons, they'd won three in a row entering play today. Trying to make it four. Miles Daniels, he just wants to make it rain in West Texas. Drilling that three bullseye from the top of the key right in that back rim. Daniels then gets a screen, goes left, sets, fires, splashes another one home. Daniels was feeling it today. He would finish with five threes, contributing to his 19 points. And speaking of threes, Jordan Horn spins on the drive, hits the shot, plus the foul, trying to get the three points the old-fashioned way. Horn was a big presence here, and then Dewan Jones feeds Horn. Open at the top of the arc for the tray. One of his seven threes made. He and Daniels combined for 12 of the team's 13 threes. The other, Kendall Frey right here. Off the dish from Jones. Ball barely touched his hands before firing. And then a nice play there. Horn, step back. Oh, you can't catch me there. Cash money. He led all players with 26 points. But the Falcons, they lose their lead in the second half. And their losing streak starts at one after their winning streak is snapped at three. Texas Tech hosting TCU, meanwhile, hey, during one of the breaks, a Texas Tech fan hitting this half-court shot. Yeah, that guy just won a trip to Las Vegas. Not a bad way to start the game, but Horn Frogs, they're up six. Damian Baugh drills the catch-and-shoot three. TCU is up nine at this point, but later in the first, Kevin McCuller tries a three. No, but some bad news here. After he misses the three, he's going to roll his ankle and fall to the court in pain. McCuller, it appeared that he stepped on head coach, uh, TCU head coach's Jamie Dixon's foot and he hurt his ankle. McCuller would leave the game and would not return. So something to keep an eye on moving forward. Red Raiders down four late in the first half. Terrence Shannon Jr., my goodness, cocks it back and throws it down with authority. Gets the fans in it. And then a nice floater here after they're down two at the half. Bryson Williams with the second chance. Layup gets the and one. Tech up two on the three-point play. Later in the second, Red Raiders, they're up six. Nice save there on the steal. Marcus Santos Silva for the jam. Tech up eight at this point. All the momentum. And then they're cruising. Up 18 at this point. Shannon Jr. knocks down the three. Tech rolls after Shannon leads the team with 20 points. So a big conference win. So a lot of great basketball in West Texas, but of course, we got the big game tomorrow in Los Angeles, Rams, Bengals, Rob, Stephania, any predictions? I personally think the Rams are gonna win. I'm biased, so I think the Rams. I don't know about you, 49er fan, so you tell me. Avi, you know what happened after the, <laughs> what happened to our boys, the Niners, you know, I'll your, the your Bengals. Boys. Your boys. Yeah, excuse me, let me rephrase. And also, a name we don't see too often, the Bengals, up in the championship, big yeah. game. All right, well, thank you, Avi, appreciate that. And uh, we'll be right back. Going on now at Ashley's President's Day Mattress Sale. Save 20% off Glideaway adjustable bases or save up to 800 off select adjustable mattress sets. Plus, get 0% interest for 7 years on top bedding brands. Only at Ashley. 
1,900 miles of a divide between two countries. I've been living in this county for almost 40 years. I've never seen it like this. Only on News Nation. This is a border, and it needs to be respected. Showing you the untold stories at the border crossings. Giving a voice to Americans living in a time of turmoil. Join us for our exclusive border report right here. The impactful stories of the border. Border Report. Communities in crisis. Starting next week on Morning in America. An attorney general who has really led the way. Somebody who has been brave and strong. Ken Paxton. By complete and total endorsement. Ken Paxton is America's most conservative attorney general. When Joe Biden stopped deporting illegal immigrants, Ken Paxton took him to court and won. And a federal judge ordered deportations to continue. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Defending the Constitution. Protecting our freedom. Purchase your tickets today and break away from the screen on Friday, March 4th at 7 p.m. to experience world-class live magic like never before with Champions of Magic at the Actor Theater located in downtown Odessa. Tickets are available at www.theactor.com or by phone at 432-643-1246. This weekend only at Ashley's President's Day Early Access Sale. Save 25% off your first item plus 20% off the rest of your purchase. Or get 0% interest for five years with three months payment assistance. Friday through Monday only at Ashley. Watch Good Morning Basin from 5 to 7 on ABC Big 2. We're just one day away from the big game and the Rams are taking on the Bengals with a home field advantage. Now... Among the 70,000 people expected to attend, 15 kids and their families are going to be there, thanks to Make-A-Wish. Now, Make-A-Wish is celebrating 40 years of partnership with the NFL. This group of kids will be able to take part in a number of events at the game. At first, I didn't, I completely forgot, like, everything that happened. I was like, wait, I have a wish? And it was just kind of a shock moment knowing that I would come here. And I was supposed to come here last year, but then COVID happened and that got canceled. So I stayed optimistic, you know, and I'm here now and I'm very excited to be here. Now, 12 different states are being represented in that group. They also got to attend the NFL Honors Award Ceremony. Well, more exciting stuff, celebrity parties are kicking off tonight in L.A. Ahead of tomorrow's big matchup. The red carpet was full of celebrities last night as they roll into the big game. Haiti Column among the stars hitting in town. Many attend an event at the Pacific Design Center in Los Angeles featuring a Justin Bieber performance. Other celebrities attending the event couldn't help but be excited about their hometown hosting the big game for the first time in nearly 30 years. We have like celebrities and fashion and football, like everything all in one. Like LA is like, it's Hollywood. So it's like a really cool place where every, everything just like kind of meets and it's like, it's a cool dynamic. Many celebrities are hoping that this is the new era for football in Los Angeles. And competition is heating up at the Winter Olympics. Coming up tonight, we're talking with Team USA and their run for gold. All that and more next. And as we head to break, a reminder that if you see news happening, share your videos and photos on social media with us. Make sure you use the hashtag ABCBig2News. And if you haven't done it yet, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are ABCBig2News. ABC Big 2 Sports, brought to you by Glasheen Valles and Enderman Injury Lawyers. You can't believe everything you hear. Like George Washington, never chopped down that old cherry tree. But you can believe in big savings during the President's Day Super Sale at Furniture Row. Right now, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Check out special purchases while they last. Plus, seven years no interest financing. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices, guaranteed. The President's Day Super Sale, on now at Furniture Row. Why would Stanton Optical choose a spokes bird? They're not your typical eye care company. I'm not your typical penguin. We're a team. There's no eye in eye care. Wait. <laughs> Get two pairs of glasses plus a free eye exam, anti-glare lenses, and same-day service for only $79. One of these women is lying to my face. This is so hard. Tears, tears, tears. 
I made the wrong decision. And now, most admired alum. Get up there. This is so embarrassing. There's no way it's me. <laughs> you know her. You love her. Ruh -ruh. What are you doing here? It's Anna Gomez! Who? Our first gadillionaire. With AT&T Fiber, Anna's got the fastest internet with hyper gig speed. I didn't know you went to school. I have a lot in common. Live like a gadillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Now with speeds up to 5 gigs. Limited availability. Honey, what was your favorite part of the weekend? Wow! Another gold medal for the U.S. in 2022 Winter Games. This one for mixed snowboard cross. And the men's hockey team got their first Olympic win over Canada in 12 years. Here's ABC's Morgan Norwood with the latest. Team USA winning its fifth gold medal of these 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Lindsay Jacobellis and Nick Bumgarner winning in the mixed snowboard cross. At 40 years old, Bumgarner is the oldest snowboarder to win an Olympic medal. And at 36, Jacobellis is the second oldest. Robinson On the ice, a win for Team USA's men's hockey team, defeating Canada 4-2 in a preliminary round of the tournament. It was the first time the American men's hockey team beat Canada in the Olympics since 2010. The U.S. now gearing up to face Germany in the final match of that round. Meanwhile, the decision on whether 15-year-old Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva will be able to compete in the upcoming women's event hinging on an urgent hearing at the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Tomorrow evening, the hearing will be conducted by video conference. So it means that there will be no participants except uh, the CAS uh, people. So, But we will make an announcement in public uh, on Monday. The controversy stemming from a positive drug test for a banned substance in December. The results not coming to light to the International Olympic committee until after Valieva helped the Russian Olympic Committee win gold in the team skate event Monday. The Russian Olympic Committee has defended her saying she passed doping tests before and after her positive drug test. In the inaugural Olympic monobob competition beginning this weekend, Americans Alana Myers-Taylor and Callie Humphreys are expected to be the top contenders in the new event. Both women tested positive for COVID recently but recovered in time to keep their Olympic hopes on track. Morgan Norwood, ABC News. A fresh start begins with fresh choices, like choosing to save more with Suddenlink. Get reliable, high-speed, one-gig internet for just $49.99 a month. With it, you'll get a $200 Visa prepaid card, HBO Max included on us for one year, and a free Suddenlink stream with your favorite shows and streaming apps all in one device. Choose to start fresh by saving more on our fastest speed. Plus, as part of optimum flexibility from Suddenlink, there are no contracts or hidden fees. And unlock even more value when you combine with Optimum Mobile. Visit Suddenlink.com today. From contemporary to modern furniture and home decor to gifts for any occasion, Perch has something for everyone. The only visual comfort lighting gallery in West Texas and unique pieces not found anywhere else in Midland. We offer custom orders as well to fit your specific need. Many of our items are available for you to take home the same day. Come shop our ever-growing inventory and see why we are the pillow store. Perch Home Store and Gifts. Unique luxury pieces at affordable prices. The perfect getaway. Okay, thank you. Stay connected anywhere. Do you like it? It's a new style. It's an oasis. It's delicious. It's elegant. It's relaxing. The MCM Elegante Hotel and Spa. In the field, on the farm, at kitchen tables, and in church. Texans live by our conservative values. And that's why Kevin Sparks is running for Texas Senate. Hardworking, God-fearing, conservative. Spent years working in the oil field. 
now leads his family business. Kevin Sparks, a Christian, father, believes in parents' rights. No CRT. And Kevin Sparks will work to secure our southern border. Endorsed by President Trump fighting for Texans. Well, friends, let's take one last look at that seven-day forecast. Tomorrow morning, we'll wake up at 25 degrees, and then we're going to actually reach all the way up to 63-degree temperatures, perfect enough for, you know, grilling for the big game and getting your loved ones some gifts for the next day. That's all the time we have for news, and thank you so much for joining us. See you tomorrow, and good night.